So you're thinking about moving out of California. Is it worth it? We're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons. We're just going to have a real conversation about a lot of people leaving California. A lot of people come back to California. And which one of those buckets do you fit into? Today we got Aaron. Aaron, how's it going, man? Hey, what's going on, brother? I'm. Uh, this is always a, a fun topic to talk about. I was telling you before, I'd, I, I almost do this every single day with either my wife or some of my friends. This is like topic du jour in the Klaus house. So uh, excited for this one. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about it. A lot of people, let, and let's just say, you know, let's forget about Florida. Let's forget about Nashville because the heavy hitter that it seems like a lot of people like is Texas, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Why? And I've and and I've I've done deep dive rabbit holes into all sorts of communities in Texas, and you know the pros and cons of of Texas. I, I think no matter where you're looking, although it seems like most people leaving California are looking at Texas or going that direction, you know, the, the biggest exchange really is like when you're, for instance, Texas does not have an income tax. So that sounds really attractive, right? You're like, boom, right away. I'm like oh, yeah. 8% more, maybe 10% more, or wherever you, you fall, you know, you've, you've now got a gain, but their property taxes are like three times what they are here. So, you know, depending on how, you know, much you spend on real estate, for instance, you might not actually be saving in property taxes and so on. So um, there, there's definitely, you know, like a, a tit for tat. But I think personally, the biggest tax that you're going to pay is I call it the weather tax. Basically, like, you know, as as much as we like to complain about how hot it gets out here sometimes in the greater Sacramento Valley, or, you know, like when we get our, our uh, periods of heavy rain in the winter or whatever, you know, when you, when you compare it to pretty much everywhere else, short of like Maui, you know, or something like that, um, it, it, it's hard to beat. You're either gonna have tornadoes, you know, hurricanes, snow, freezing rain, you know, all, all sorts of, you know, different components as far as all that stuff goes. So. I feel like that's one of the biggest things that you got to be considering is the weather difference. Like when I was in the Air Force, um, I lived in the South mostly. Like I was in Mississippi. Uh, I lived in Missouri for a little bit. I was in Florida, North Carolina. You, we don't even know what humidity is in California. So it's like, you know, we also don't know what a cold winter is unless you're somebody that lives in Tahoe or something. So. Right, right out of the gate, you got the the uh, weather tax, you know. And I mean, think about you, Mark. I mean, one of your your you know favorite things to do when you're not slanging real estate is hanging out in your backyard, floating around in the pool, you know, meet on the Traeger, hanging out, all that stuff. And you definitely get to do that a lot more here than you know in most places. So I'd I'd say right out of the gate, that's one thing everybody's got to consider. What do you think? I think, yeah, weather for sure. I've been to Texas a lot, more than most. You know, um, I was born in Texas till I was about maybe like three, and then I moved to California. Um, so I know I've lived in a few different states in the United States. You know what I mean? I've lived actually out of the United States too for a little while too, doing some marketing for some businesses out there. Like, I don't know. You know, I think a lot of people, and here's what I think a lot of people miss, right? Is the idea that you really, like everything is in life in general, the grass is always going to be greener. It just always is. You know, oh man, sure. I want this. I bought my car. I want that car. I got a house. I want that house. I mean, living here, I'm living, you know, over there is better. You know, like for me, I've lived in a lot of different places and I came back to California with the, with the one notion in my head that I love California. I love California more than any other state, any other country. I think California, I mean, you know, United States, but what I'm saying to you is like, I just love California and mm -hmm. it, not for politics or weird stuff like that, just because of the weather. Um, I love being close to the ocean. Um, I don't like humidity. Um, and for me, you know, like Sacramento was probably the one last spot in all of California that I felt like there was affordable California where you can still have the California lifestyle. Like you were saying, like, you know, barbecue mm -hmm. pool, an hour and 20 minutes, you're in Tahoe, Sierra Ski Ranch, and you're skiing. We got wine country here and everything, too. Like, I like that. That, for me, is a lot, is very attractive, and that's kind of how I want to raise, like, my family, and I like mm -hmm. that. It's, um, you know, you only go around once, and for me, you know, I'm not going to, like, I look at those, you know, 
the videos of those mega mansions in Texas. And even though they're sweet, don't get me wrong. And you can buy one for like $3. It's crazy. Um, uh, I still think humidity. I think of being like in the middle of kind of a lot of those places are in the middle of nowhere and just, yep. they just don't have access to a lot of stuff. So for me, I look at it and just go like, it's just something I wouldn't even, I don't even consider except I, I do. It blows me away about the prices on the homes. Sure. I mean, it's just crazy, you know? Um, and but I also think the rest of you oh, go for it. I was going to say just that's that's kind of what gets everybody interested is the prices initially. You see some reel on, you know, Insta or TikTok or whatever and you know, you're looking at this just dope spread on on a little bit of property and all this stuff and then you see the price and you're like, "Wow." But then you go on Google Maps and you look, you know, and it's like out in the middle of nowhere. So like you, you had mentioned something, uh, you know, when you were talking about, you know, basically that California lifestyle for you and you were talking about, you said one word that sticks out is family. And I think that that's like the, the next biggest thing when it comes to like, is this even realistic or not, um, for most people. And, and this, like, in my opinion, like, don't get me wrong. I love the idea of moving out of state. Like I joked around in the beginning of this, I'd, I'd talk about it almost daily. In, in fact, like I was just telling, you know, Mark, my wife sent me a, a text the other day with a Zillow listing, for some house in Tennessee or something like that. And I mean, it was, it was amazing. Checked all of our boxes, except it wasn't located in like Placerville or whatever. Right. And so I was like, great, let's, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And, you know, immediately the conversation changes to, well, you know, I don't know if my mom and dad will move out there and I don't know if my sister is going to relocate her family out there. And like once you start like kind of like pulling back into reality of of your sphere of influence, your family, which is most most everybody, it's their family and, you know, friends. Um, but I mean. I, I feel like that's truly the biggest hurdle to overcome. Even if like you can get over humidity or the weather or whatever, it's like, how do you talk everybody in your tribe to to join you on that journey to, you know, wherever it's going to be. And, you know, everybody's got jobs and school and all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's not as easy as it, as it looks, you know, obviously just buying a house and moving is no big deal, but actually doing it, that's, that's a, that's a big deal. See, for me, here's the thing. The weather is a big thing for me. Family, you're totally right. Mm -hmm. That's number one. But the weather, I've lived in humid places. I've lived sure. in those areas where it's like, it's hot, so hot that you wear like shorts or jeans out and you get up on those chairs out of the, after you're done dinner and your jeans are sticking to you and you got <laughs> white shirts that turn yellow within like three or four days. Um, and you just can't seem to ever get dry when you're getting out of the shower. Um, and for me, I hate that. Yeah. I dislike humidity. The only but benefit of humidity is like, I'm really a 92 year old man and look at the skin, you know, like totally. uh, skin, the humidity <laughs> that's, you know, but for me, I, I could, uh, humidity is just a deal killer for me. It's just, I just don't, I couldn't do that. I did it for seven years and it's just like, for me, it was brutal. You know, um, I didn't like it. Um, as far as also, here's another thing people don't factor in. They're always go, ah, humidity living there. Also the maintenance of a house, the paint, all that stuff wears away more with humidity. I mean, you'll walk into houses, um, areas like Florida, areas like Texas, and you'll look at the corners and if they're not maintained, they'll start getting humidity. You'll have to mm -hmm. paint them a lot more uh, often and everything too. And I, I saw that and it was something that for me, I was like, I don't want to deal with that. You know, um, wood's got to be treated differently as well too. So for me, um, you know, California, you know, for my family, of course, definitely, you know, like my, you know, my wife, she has her father here, her mother here mm -hmm. and everything too. And we're really like, you know, centralized around here. We love having our family get togethers and everything too. Um, but for us, you know, the biggest question for me is this, it's like, let's say I hadn't moved into Sacramento and what's going to happen to Sacramento, in my opinion, is in by 2030, we're going to become, it's going to be very un unaffordable. Um, you know, not, I mean, comparatively to the United States, but definitely we're going to be getting, it's going to be definitely kind of, it's going to, it's going to turn into one of those spots where people are like, I can't even get into Sacramento anymore. Sure. Um, probably is at this point for some as well too. But I guess what I'm saying is if Sacramento was as high as maybe the Bay area or something, I don't know what I would do. I, I like Sacramento for the bang for your buck, the location. Mm -hmm. I think it's still one of those areas. It might be the only area that is like on a super, super hectic growth spurt right now. 
and I feel right now like a like I'm on the on a surfboard, right? And it's like we're going towards like a very good area. So for me, that's kind of one of the reasons why I I'm so high on Sacramento, so high on California. I don't know if I would be that high on it if I was in the Bay Area. I was sure. renting, and in, in the foreseeable future, I still couldn't imagine buying because prices were so high. And the B area is where I worked and I couldn't do remote working. I don't know at that point what I'd be doing. Maybe I'd be at my break time looking at Texas, looking at like Nashville, looking at Florida. I, I don't know. You know, that's that's the toughest thing. You know what I mean? Well, the but you mentioned, you know, you're at work on break time, you know, because you cannot work remote. Well, that's the other thing is like, you know, like my wife, her, uh, her sister, uh, they came from Boise. Uh, before relocating out here to El Dorado Hills to be near us. So my challenge, even, you know, even if I could talk my wife's parents into it, now I got to talk, you know, that, that ain't never going to happen. So anyways, she was a nurse in Boise and I can't remember specifically how much money she made, but when she relocated to be a nurse in the Sacramento area, it was like literally like a double uh, pay bump. And so the point being is like, you're not going to make as much money in a lot of other areas around the country that you do in the greater Sacramento Bay Area, whatever, you know, if you go relocate to Montana, Texas, you know, wherever, most likely, unless you can be remote and take your income with you, or maybe you're like self-employed and you're in a line of work where you can do it from anywhere, it's like an online business or whatever, it, there's really not many places that the cost of living is so high that the average income is also as high. Like you'd have to be going to New York or Chicago, maybe Seattle, something like that. And if, if your whole point of leaving California is the cost of California, then those places I just listed that, that doesn't help your cause, you know, if it's going to make it worse, if anything. Um, so, well, you know, bringing your income with you isn't you know that's that's a big part of it now here's the thing for me when i was out of the country i was out of the country for seven years and um i had one of those jobs i had one of those remote jobs and everything too and it was great and everything too the one thing though i didn't factor in is that what ends up happening if that job goes bye-bye um the demand for what you're doing for work goes bye-bye sure. are you in an area that you can pick up another gig? Are you in an area that has employers? Like, you know, everyone's always like, oh yeah, you know, I can work remotely, I'm good to go. But as we've seen, like so many people, like Google's laying off, this is laying off, that's laying off. You know, I mean, that does happen. And it's like, let's say you're moving to Texas, for example, and I love those Texas houses. Let's say you're going to, sure. um, you know, Texas, remote area, but you don't care, man, you're remote work. They love you. You're that one cog in the wheel that basically will never get fired. And something happens to the company. I mean, and all of a sudden you're, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere in this huge, huge McMansion out there. And you're thinking to yourself like, okay, I looked within like an hour drive, I'm not near anything. And I, you know, there's a lot of people looking for these online positions that I had at my other company. What do I do? And that was kind of my uh -huh. position. I was like, I did not know, you know, what I was going to do because I didn't factor in the idea that like, I thought, you know, Hey, my job's great. They need me. We're, we're good. But as we know with anything else, I mean, stuff does happen really, really fast. And so for me, it was one of those things that like, you know, if, if someone's making the move, even though they might have complete job security, the idea is they want to move somewhere where like, if for some reason they have a plan B, plan C, plan D, especially if they got kids, especially if they got Boy. a lot of people depending on them. Um, and so that's one of the things too. It's like, you know, I mean, who knows? I mean, in 10 years, everyone could be all working for an AI robot. You never know. So it's very important to be near an economic hub, economic center where there's like jobs, there's employment, there's stuff to do. And that was one of the things I did like about Sacramento too. The idea of like, you know, because I'm up from a very strong tech marketing background. Um, so I was like, hey, Sacramento, you know, do real estate. I love it. Uh, but at the end of the day, if all of a sudden there's an AI mark on YouTube, then all of a sudden, you know, state jobs are close by. I got a heavy tech background. And like, I'm here where there's diversification of jobs. I mean, like, I know so many people in the tech market here that are working like or Kaiser or Sutter, and they're not doctors, mm -hmm. they're not nurses, but they're infrastructure jobs, right? Sure. State jobs too. I got like a, a friend of mine, Brett, he's a Cisco engineer and he's like loving it because they're battling on which position, like, you know, he's battling which position he wants and they're fighting for him. So, you know, I like that about the Sacramento area. And I don't know if you'd go and buy a McMansion, Texas, if you have that. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. And it, 
if, if you need to earn income to have a living, you know, if, if you're a baller or you, you, you know, you owned your Bay Area house for 30, 40 years and you're selling it for three million and you're just taking your, you know, your winnings and retiring off into the sunset, you know, maybe that's a different story or whatever. But for most people, they're not going to fall into that box. Right. And so the, the income piece is very important. And like what I've personally found, although I wasn't necessarily looking because I could take my income anywhere, um, more so for me, it was looking for just infrastructure for my family, you know, schools, things, kids, all that kind of stuff. And what I found mostly is that in these areas that you would want to live, whether it's in Texas or whatever state, um, it's pretty darn expensive. It's almost close to being as expensive as Sacramento, not as expensive as San Francisco. I mean, what is, but you know, when you're looking at cost comparison, uh, a lot of those areas in other states that are really popular because they have the infrastructure and all that, that's where every, you know, during COVID where everybody fled to. And so those prices went through the roof. And so, uh, especially like smaller areas like Boise, for instance, um, and you got the problems as well as due to all that COVID growth, a lot of areas have not been able to keep up with the infrastructure. Like there's just not enough resources, you know, kind of thing. But you you made me think of something as far as things go that I've seen, I've had clients over the years, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, so you see stuff over time. And um, I've, I've actually had a handful of clients over the years that have either relocated to Nevada or to Tennessee I think I'd, I'd, I had one that went to Texas as well that fall into this category. They all had to come back, either that their employment changed and they thought that they were going to be able to work remote and all that stuff. And then the employer was like, nah, that's not going to work. A couple of them had health issues and then they wanted to come back and be close to family again. I will tell you, all of them, hands down, told me that it was much harder to come back to California than it was to leave in terms of like the financial burden because i mean think about it <clears throat> you know when you leave it's not like inflation stops and home prices stop increasing so if you're gone for five years and home prices go up you know five six ten percent depending on where we're talking about in this region well geez i mean a half a million dollar home is going to cost eight hundred, seven fifty, eight hundred thousand dollars by the time you're you're coming back or whatever. And so that barrier of entry is much greater versus people that, you know, they already own their house or, you know, they bought in and now they've been there long enough to where it, it makes, you know, more financial sense to be in that. So it's it's tough to come back, guys. It, it, it really is. Well, I say that also from people like myself, you know, transplant from the Bay Area. I mean, one is I don't want to, but I also look at it one of those things where I say to myself, like, who, you know, to get back into the Bay Area, oh, that's, yeah. oof, man, that, I don't even know if that's feasible. It's just like, you know, one is also like, you know, the area I grew up in Marin, I mean, when I grew up, I mean, it's just typical, like, you know, what was it three and two four and two like we converted um it was about an 1800 square foot house it looked huge when i was growing up but now if you're in sacramento one is you get used to the size here and so you're like Ugh, it's a little yeah. small and then you look at it and you're like hey if you can get that for 1.5 million and you're like oh okay wow <laughs> that's brutal but then see here's the part about having a smaller home that a lot of people don't factor into is the idea that like because you have a smaller home a lot of people tend to like go outside want to want to go out right hey, let's go eat let's go to a park let's go here and as everybody knows the bay area is just so spendy you know it's just so crazy i mean you spend money on parking breathing water i mean you know you sure. name it and so when you live somewhere in the sacramento if you want that california life you're still pretty solid here you know like what you go to costco friday and then you basically can just hang out your house and relax a little bit and then you're out the door on monday morning if you got a nine to five so it's not really that bad and a lot of people love this stuff because we bring a lot of family and friends over um and they do that stuff in texas as well too i mean those big man mansions and everything too um what you said though hit me pretty i mean and it was a little bit earlier in the conversation is like you know when we were talking offline you were like you know your wife was like hey if we're moving i saw this house in texas 
you know, it's great, but we got to bring Aunt Sue, my brother, my mother, my cousin, my nephew. We, we need to bring at least 20 family members for me to even consider this. So uh-huh. it's like, it's, it's kind of a bigger commitment, especially now, you know, here's the thing. I think COVID brought families closer together. And so if you were someone in Texas, let's say you moved one of these McMansions and your family all lived in California, um, it could be a little bit lonely, you know, the idea of always coming back and forth, plane flights, you know, they're not as, you know, you know the whole mask on, it's not as friendly as, as normal. Totally. I mean, like for you, I mean, that's, like you said, that's a deal breaker. The idea that, you know, you might see a house you like, Aaron, you might go, you know what, I can move my business there. It's not, not a big deal, but I need to have basically every person in the family commit to this as well too. And that's where the deal kind of breaks, correct? Oh yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm I'm at a point now like where I most of the time when the, it comes up in conversation I'll be like let's not even waste our energy talking about this or like planning our life out in you know Nashville or whatever let's focus on reality you know your parents aren't going to move everybody lives in El Dorado Hills if we want to live in the country we got to like be in Placerville or something we're not moving to Texas let's just be real with it and it's it's because it's going to be impossible to to get people to move out. I mean, one of my wife's family members is from Santa Clara. They've been there since 92. I can't remember exactly what they paid. I think it was like 270, 290, something like that. The the homes in the neighborhood are selling for about 3 million bucks and they they own their house. And so uh, at a barbecue a couple weekends ago, Uncle Bob, he's like, "Man, there's a house right down the street that's for sale. I I want to buy it. Like, let's let's do that." But Aunt Soph is like, but my parents, you know, she's got old parents that are, you know, they need a lot of help and all that stuff. And so it's just like even them to be able to make the transition from Santa Clara to El Dorado Hills, which is like a two, you know, three hour drive, depending on traffic or whatever. That's a big family commitment. You know, you imagine getting everybody to like actually uproot and go out of state and all that stuff. I mean, it's just. It, it's a, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of emotions. Um, I, I, you know, I wish it was a, a much easier thing to uh, pull off. Cause I'd, I got a lot of places I'd like to go to. <laughs> All right. So what are your top, let's talk about your top spots that, okay. If you, if, if, you know, you're good to go, everything, all, every, all the families are in the, in the wagons <laughs> are heading out. Like where are your top five spots? Oh yeah. Uh, Austin, Texas, and not just like specifically Austin, but like if, if you go like Northeast of Austin, like 30 minutes, you're in like a bunch of, like, it would almost be like going to El Dorado Hills. Like you're in the burbs or whatever, you're Folsom or whatever. You're kind of off in like really nice communities, but they're on a little bit more property, all that stuff. But you're, you're close enough to where your kids aren't living on the moon. Like they're going to have friends and sports and all that stuff. Um, okay. you can get the same thing in certain areas around Dallas as well. Um, Franklin, Tennessee, which is a community Southwest of Nashville, Tennessee is awesome. Okay. <clears throat> and then, uh, for me, Kalispell, Montana, which is like the, the West side of uh, glacier national park. Um, that would be like a dream, but I could never talk my wife into living up there in the snow and, <laughs> you're kind of more away from, from everything. But, uh, yeah, those, those are the areas I I've also looked at Florida, but you know, like you'd mentioned earlier, like we're in SAC, we're close to the ocean right now, although we do have great white sharks and you know, there's, there's monsters that live in our ocean too. Like you go into Florida and you got gators, you got boa constrictors everywhere or pythons or whatever. And then you also got like all the bull sharks and tiger. I mean, like everything's <laughs> trying to kill you, man. So I, I don't know if that one pencils for me besides like all the humidity and hurricanes that you got to deal with. Dude, for me, straight up Florida, alligators, crocodiles, there's no way I'm going over there. <laughs> there's just no way, man. Some about alligators, some about crocodiles. I don't know which one is over there, but, but that ain't happening for me. That just, no, thank you. Uh-huh. I'm good with that. I would, you know, I'm good. Like, that's fine. You know, like, I mean, it's like a great white shark that can kind of crawl on land as well too. I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> totally. So yeah. So for me, not happening. Um, okay. So we got, okay. So we got Austin, we got Franklin, Tennessee. We got cattle spell Montana. Um, what's number four? 
Because I know you, man. Aaron, one thing you guys might not know about Aaron, I guarantee you he has got his five. He knows population. He knows like this. He knows <laughs> schools and everything. And he's trying to convince his wife almost every night to move. So what's number four? Well, the other area that I've looked into a bunch is Knoxville, Tennessee, which is like the east side of Tennessee. And the reason that I've honestly looked in that a bit is that her sister has – you know, played with the idea of relocating to North Carolina. And so that borders North Carolina. You're only like three hours away from Myrtle Beach. There's a lot of stuff where you can be like, hey, it's sort of like Sacramento, but, you know, <laughs> with without the taxes and, you know, other things. Okay. All right. And number five. Oh, man. Number five. Um, I, uh, I, I really like uh, like the Eagle area of Boise which is North Boise. Um, but again, I, you know, the, uh, the snow and, and all that stuff, uh, it's, it's a hard no for, uh, for my wife. All right. So Aaron's got his tie five. I like it for me, guys. I love, I, I, you know, yeah, I know we got, you know, income tax and everything. And a lot of people throwing other stuff into this whole mix. But for me, we got it pretty good here. Sure. You got like great weather. You're close to the ocean. You got rivers, lakes, some of the best scenery in the United States. Um, in Sacramento here, we're close to the snow. We're close to wine country. If you like the Bay Area and the Giants, we got the A's coming for three years. I just, I can't see it for me. You know, like I said, unless something happened and, you know, I don't know. I love California. I think California is a great spot. And like I said, I look at it from more from like, and you, you're kind of the same way because you've traveled around a lot too. I've lived in other spots. You know, I, mm -hmm. I really, really have Arizona for a while, like what Texas and all that stuff too. And just, uh, for me, just myself personally, like California is above and beyond in my opinion, the spot I want to be in now. That's not saying, and I'm not one of those people who's going to say, oh, California is for everybody. It's not for everybody. The truth of the matter is, it's like everyone should find where they want to live. Everyone should find the, mm -hmm. the, whatever they're looking for, they should find it. I mean, everyone's different. Everyone's going to have a different place where they like to live. And that's one of the things that kind of makes life fun, right? For some people, sure. ooh, Texas is it, man. There's nothing better than Texas. Some people, it's Nashville. Yeah, Tennessee. Some people, it's like California. But that's kind of one of the fun things about like being in real estate, like Aaron and I, lending. Like, we wish you guys to find your spot. You know, I find my spot. That's why I'm super enthusiastic about Sacramento. Like, I think we're on a gold rush in Sacramento, and I think we're property prices are going up, up, up. Um, and so for me, I, I love where I'm at. I love the weather here and everything too. But I definitely wish everyone to find their spot. I mean, I think you only go around once and, mm -hmm. um, and you know, enjoy it, enjoy the ride and it should be where you want to live, you know, and hopefully I wish that for everyone out there. You know what I mean, Aaron? Yeah, a absolutely. And, uh, you know, if you're, it, whether you're, you know, thinking about leaving the state or you just want to stay here like the rest of us, uh, I can help you out with your home loan. If you got questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. You can go to meetnewway.com, tap right into my calendar and I'd love to help you. I think sometimes we kind of like, we get caught up in the conversation. Sometimes we don't give our like, you know, like that, you know what I mean? Mm. Aaron is an amazing broker. He's not a lender. He's a broker. What that means is he has access to a whole bunch of programs that just your bank or whatnot might not have access to. So as far as competitive, Aaron's the guy we go to for a lot of our clients because he's just really good at what he does. The other thing with Aaron, Jen, and New Way is they have redundancy that most other people don't, i.e. he and Jen are like twins. So mm -hmm. if he, they all know what's going on with every transaction that's happening and you always get that redundancy, you always get someone on the phone. So that's why we talk. Sometimes we get lost in conversation, but if you're looking for someone to talk to about like a mortgage, if you're thinking about like starting down this path of home ownership, I would definitely recommend Jen and Aaron and New Way Mortgage because they have treated our clients like gold um, and they're amazing. And like I said, they don't only lend here in Sacramento. How, where else do you guys lend? We're licensed in more states than we're not. I mean, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Just as easy as that. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoy this candid conversation. And this is no teleprompter, no weird stuff. This is just me and Aaron basically talking a little bit about conversations that we might have offline regarding the clients of ours. Some of them are thinking about moving out of California. Some of them are moving back into Cal or coming back to California. And some of them are just coming to California for the first time. And we have a, a, a lot of different kind of situations happening. And so we just want to share with you 
what has been popping in our brain as far as like people moving, people coming in mm-hmm. and all that fun stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed the conversation. Um, and like I said, real unscripted conversations and uh, hopefully it worked. Aaron, any parting words? Yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Now, if you did, there's more from me and Aaron right there on that playlist. And if you're looking just about Sacramento's real estate market, there's a playlist right over there for you as well, too. Sacramento real estate market stuff that I do live at 7 p.m. every Wednesday. And please hit right here, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Until next time, guys, this is Mark. Have a good one.